In 1979, the Soviet Union initiated a program, I-90. The program was outlined for need of next generation fighter aircraft. It was intended to enter service in the 1990s. The program required fighter aircraft to be multifunctional by having substantial ground attack capabilities and would eventually replace the MiG-29 and Su-27 in frontline tactical aviation service. Here we would like to tell you Russia had already started its fifth generation program before the United States. But due to the dissolution of Soviet Union in late 1991, program was delayed by nine years. The two subsequent projects were framed to meet these requirements, the MFI or multifunctional frontline fighter, and LFI for light and small fighter. The conceptual work begins in 1983, and McCoyan was selected for the MFI, though. Sukhoi was not a participant in the MFI, even then it started its own program in 1983 to develop technologies for a next generation fighter. With this, Sukhoi came with an experimental aircraft with forward swept wing. This plane was S-32, later redesignated S-37, and then Su-47. Due to a lack of funds after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the MFI was repeatedly delayed and the first flight of the program prototype did not occur until 2000. And this was 9 years behind the schedule. Owing to the high costs, the MFI and LFI were eventually cancelled, and the Russian Ministry of Defense began work on a new next generation fighter program. In 1999, the ministry initiated the I-21 program. Because of Russia's financial difficulties, the program aimed to reign in costs by producing a single multi-role fifth generation fighter that would replace both the Su-27 and the MiG-29. Sukhoi and Mikoyan selected for I-21 program. Sukhoi's approach to the I-21 program was different from Mikoyan's. Mikoyan proposed for the three design bureaus, Mikoyan, Sukhoi, and Yakovlev to cooperate as a consortium with the winning team leading the design effort. On the flip side, Sukhoi's proposal had itself as the lead designer from the beginning, and included a joint work agreement that covered the entire development and production cycle, from propulsion and avionics supplies to research facilities. The two companies had differing design philosophies for the aircraft. McCoyan product, E7, 21 was smaller and more affordable, with normal takeoff weight of 35,000 to 37,000 pounds, and powered by a pair of Klimov VK-10M engines, with 22,000 to 24,300 pounds of thrust. In contrast, Sukhoi's T-50 was comparatively larger and more capable, with normal takeoff weight goal of 49,000 to 51,000 pounds, and powered by a pair of Lyulka Saturn AL-41 F1 engines. The research and development program for T-50 was codenamed as Stolitsa, which means capital city. Sukhoi used existing airframes as test beds for various subsystems and concepts. The Su-47 tested internal weapon bays, and Su-27M prototypes served as test beds for the flight control system and engines. To reduce developmental risk and spread out associated costs, as well as to bridge the gap with extant fourth generation fighters, Sukhoi implemented some of the T-50's technology and features, such as propulsion and certain avionics. In April 2002, the Ministry of Defense selected Sukhoi over McCoyan as the winner of the I-21 program competition, and the lead design bureau of the new aircraft, later T-50 adopted as Su-57. In addition to the merits of the proposal, Sukhoi's experience in the 1990s was taken into account, with the successful development of various Sukhoi 27 derivatives and numerous exports ensuring its financial stability, while McCoyan continued to develop its C721 as the LMFS at its own expense. The first flight 4050 was not so easy. In 2007, Sukhoi encountered unspecified technical problems, and after consecutive two years of struggling, problems were resolved, but the problems are classified. T-50 also gone through redesigns, because incipient prototypes did not have adequate fatigue life, with early structural cracks forming in the airframe. Su-57 took its first flight on the 29th of January 2010, 
and after 10 years it entered to service on the 25th of December 2020. In 2004, Sukhoi anticipated that the Su-57 could become the basis for a family of combat aircraft for the Russian Aerospace Forces, similar to the Su-27 family. And under the program name Megalopolis, the company started developing a new variant, designated Su-57M, that augments the base Su-57 design with improved mission systems, reliability, and maintenance enhancements, incorporation of electromechanical drives, and the new Saturnized Ely I-30 engines. The Su-57 is a fifth-generation multi-role fighter aircraft and the first operational stealth aircraft for the Russian armed forces. In addition to stealth, the fighter emphasizes supermaneuverability in all aircraft axes, capacious internal payload bays for multi-role versatility, and advanced sensor systems such as active phased array radar as well as the integration of these systems to achieve high levels of automation. In the Su-57's design, Sukhoi cited the Lockheed Martin F-22 as the baseline for a supermaneuverable stealth fighter, but addressed what the Bureau considered to be the limitations, such as the inability to use thrust vectoring to induce roll and your moments, a lack of space for weapons bays between the engines resulting in insufficient payload, and complications for stall recovery if thrust vectoring fails. It is indeed true that the Su-57 is a competent aircraft with shallow observability features, powerful engines, greater payload, and even crazier maneuverability. The defining feature of the fused wing and body generation 5 jet is the radar array spread all around the aircraft, allowing it to practically look in all directions possible. In November 2018, Chief Designer and Director of the Sukhoi Design Bureau Mikhail Strelitz claimed that the Su-57 could fully perform air-to-air -air and air-to-ground tasks, unlike the F-22 and F-35, which were designed for a particular role. The F-22 was mainly found incapable of carrying larger air-to-ground munitions in its internal base after the Americans realized the constraints imposed by a purely air superiority fighter. In interview Strelitz then pointed to the coincidence of the sum of 22 and 35 as 57, maintaining that they specifically didn't choose the numerical designation for their jet.